Hello there, welcome to Carolina Cooking. I'm your host, Tom Zelenka. Average Joe learning to cook from the best chefs we have here in the Carolinas. And today we're making up a little Spanish tapas, some empanadas to be a little more exact. We're gonna try to do it in 30 minutes or less. Now keep watching, because if I can do it, you can too. The worst cook on TV. Whoa. And the best chefs in the Carolinas. Not to worry, we're trained professionals. If you can learn a lot from your mistakes, You'll learn the most from Carolina Cooking. And the shrimp. If Tom can do it, it looks delicious. so can you. Mm, now that's Carolina Cooking. Mm, mm, mm. Wow, this is incredible. Joining us today in the Hatco Viking showroom to teach us how to make a little Spanish tapas is Chef Trevor Bridgewater from Chelsea's there in Wilmington, North Carolina. Trevor, appreciate you coming out Thank and you. teaching us this. This is Spanish tapas, which is kind of like finger food in, yes. in Spain, right? Yes. And this goes with, now, is Chelsea's just kind of a, a Spanish tapas restaurant or is it uh, something else? No, Chelsea's is simply a wine bar and they have uh, food that is traditionally from certain regions. That complements the wine? Yes, absolutely. So this would complement the Spanish wines then I imagine? It is, yes. And this is, so this is empanimas? Empana, empan, em, empanadas. Empanadas, and uh, so stuffed inside, what's all inside Inside here? there's a uh, chorizo sausage, mm -hmm. uh, fresh fennel, okay. shallots, and manchego cheese. Mm, that sounds good. I, I actually want to eat them right now, but first I have to make them. I have to learn to make them. And so what's the first thing that we need to do to get started? Go ahead and if you could set this out of the way for yeah, me. Absolutely. And tell me where I need to begin. Do I get to fry stuff? Do I get to chop stuff? Do I get to chiffonade? Do I get to First we're gonna start with uh, sauteing the f fennel and shallots in a pan with butter. Okay, Alrighty. So this is fennel, right? Yes. And, and usually it has like, like big things Fronds. coming off here. Fronds. Yes. And this is the part you eat. Yeah, the bulb. Okay, and you just chop it up like normal. There's yeah, nothing. We're just gonna chop it up a small dice so it cooks up fast. Okay. All right. And uh, so first, um, let's go ahead and uh, do I need to chop this or the chives or the sausage? Let's start with the fennel. Fennel. Gotcha. All right. And you need about a th uh, quarter of it. One quarter. Yes. So like this. Yes. All right. Oh, it looks kind of like an onion on the inside. There we go. What does it taste like, by the way? It's a sweet, it's almost got a licorice flavor to it. It's nice when you first cut it. Hmm. It's nice, fresh. And a set. Crisp. Mmm, like black licorice. Yes. No, yeah, not like the Twizzler. Black licorice. All the uh, ingredients have real strong flavors and it just uh, it pairs well with wine. Now, if you don't like the black licorice flavor, could you just not put fennel in it? I yeah, don't mean to. Yeah, absolutely. And you just need the roughly chopped, nicely yeah, just, minced? Yeah, uh, just some small slices and then we'll go back and just cut okay. some small dices out of that. Alrighty. I'm trying to keep my fingers out of the way because I like to keep them all. Yeah. Now how long is, have you been there at Chelsea's? Uh, I've been at Chelsea's since it opened in the end of February, so just over four months now. Okay. Oh, so it's been open four months? Yeah, brand new restaurant. And so you have wines from all around the world. Yep. And uh, primarily you'd say you're a wine bar that serves food instead of a restaurant that serves wine, right? Yeah, it's a little bit of a different concept. Hmm. Where'd they come up with the name Chelsea's? Is there an actual Chelsea? Could I go in and meet Chelsea? No. Is she single? Is she on? <laughs> no, the, uh, the name came from uh, experiences in the Chelsea district in New York at oh. wine bars up there and just trying to bring something uh, from the big city to Wilmington. Okay, so I have my fennel all chopped up. I'm gonna set it aside. What do you need next? Uh, we're gonna go ahead and chop the chives. All right. Just do a real mince on it, just a real hmm. fine chop. Man, I wish we'd left a knife out here for you because uh, I'm slow as the dickens. And then when I try to get fast, that's usually when we get to see blood on the show, <laughs> which is not a good thing. Is this enough chives? That's perfect, right? And there. these aren't the things, so I always thought the chives came from the green onion. The, you know, they're, the, they're onion chives. But I always thought that that was just the end of, you know, a green onion that you right. gotta destroy. And yeah, then I realized, no, a lot of flavor. I'm wrong. I'm absolutely wrong. Do I need to chop this up? We need to uh, take it out of the casing. So you need to slit it lengthways. Okay. You could place it down. And just oh, good. And so just you don't have your finger in it also. Split it like this? Yeah. And then just pull all the insides out? Yeah, we could just go ahead and split both of them. And then we'll start with the shallots. And once, okay. once we saute sure. the fennel and the shallots, we'll, we'll come back to the uh, sausage. I gotcha. We okay. got it all ready to go now. All right. So there we go. And. How much? A nice hefty teaspoon right there is perfect. Hefty teaspoon. Okay. And then we have. We're gonna swirl it around. Is this we're gonna add too? the shallot first. Yeah, that's some chopped right. thing. I'll get the rest of it in here. Okay. So shallots go down first. Yeah. And then the fennel. 
Could I use just regular onion if I you didn't could, have shallots? You could, you could. Whatever's available to okay. you. The shallot has a little bit more sweetness. Yeah. So then should I, could I use a sweet Vidalia onion? You absolutely could. Because yes. sometimes I go to the store and I say, I say, um, hey, can you, where do you guys keep the shallots? And they go, hey, can we turn it huh? down a little bit? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. They just look at me like I'm kind of crazy. Right. So sometimes you need to substitute. That's perfect. Now we're going to add in the fennel. OK. Dump it in. And just stir All it up. All that fennel? Just keep it moving so that it doesn't burn. OK. Brown too much. Mm-mm-mm. All right. Well, it's cooking with season always little, seasoned. A little salt, pinch of salt, and I'll get the pepper. That's okay. my favorite part. Like to grind. How much pepper do you like? We'll do like uh, about, that's a perfect amount right there. Oh, okay. All right. And so this just needs to It's going to sweat out and translucent. It's going to be nice and tender before we throw it in with the mix. Okay. I mean, it turned it down a little too much now. All right. And so can we throw in our sausage yet? We, uh, now? No. Yeah, absolutely. Are you sure? Okay. What we'll do is just take it right out of the casing and just fold it right into the fennel and the Ooh. shallots. Now, what is chorizo sausage? Chorizo, this is a Mexican brand chorizo. It's just a, a bold blend of spices and pork. By bold blend, do you mean hot? Uh, not necessarily hot, okay. but just uh, full of flavor. Full of flavor. Alrighty. Now, what got you into cooking? Was there like an early experience where you said, hmm, I think I want to be a chef? Yeah, there was. Um, you never go hungry as a chef. Well, I guess that's, uh, that's true. Yeah. Uh, you never go hungry as a, as a host of a cooking show either. Exactly, exactly. Either. I mean, you can clearly see that uh, <laughs> I have had a few good meals. Special so. fit apron. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, it holds it all back. It's, it's like the apron girdle available. Uh, at carolinacooking.tv, uh, you can get the apron girdle, which slims on the sides, and it has kind of whalebone in here, which makes it, yeah, it's nice. It's kind of a corset apron all in one. All right, so we're just basically heating up the sausage here. Has we're the sausage We're going to cook cooked? it through. It's, uh, it's raw. Okay. We're going to cook it through, and Teresa, it, any sausage, really has a lot, of, a lot of fat that gets rendered out of it, and that's what we're trying to do is we're going to get all of it out of it and bring out the flavor you know, it and drain the fat of, off. It kind of smells like when I'm making tacos at home and I put the ground beef in and I put the spice pack right. from the Cormac. Maybe you know some what I'm cumin about? or something. I don't know what all's in there. It's right. just orange. You know which one? Alrighty. So we're going to keep frying up our sausage here. And then when we come back, we're going to be mixing it up in the bowl and mixing up our empanadas. Very good, very good. Carolina cooking continues. You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, the Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find the Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Amazon.com and our website, carolinacooking.tv. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm here with Chef Trevor Bridgewater from Chelsea's there in Wilmington, North Carolina. And our uh, chor chorizo, chorizo. Chorizo. Is, uh, was cooked and we drained out all the grease so that that wouldn't uh, go inside of, our, um, inside of our pastry dough, right? And so we've let it drain and now we're ready to use it to mix up with some of the other ingredients to make our filling for our empanada. Yes. Yeah, okay. So. Can I pour this in here? Pour it in the bowl, gotcha. and then we're going to add the shredded manchego cheese. Manchego? What is it? Is that like Parmesan? It's a oh. hard cow's milk cheese from Spain. It's got a kind of... Mmm, that tastes kind of like Parmesan. It does. It's not as salty. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. No, I can see that. All this? That Half of that right there okay. would be perfect. And could I just use Parmesan if I couldn't find manchego? Manchego, absolutely. Manchego? Okay. Breadcrumbs? Just crushed breadcrumbs. All of them? Yes. Okay. One whole egg. One whole egg. And what do we, we have to wait until, is this cool enough here? Let's see about this. Yeah, it's going to be fine. We were waiting for our, uh, our sausage to cool down because if you put the egg in uh, too soon, when it's still hot, it'll cook up the right. egg, right? So one egg. And a cooked egg is not what we want. In no, no, no. Definitely not. Please tell me that we wanted the whites and the yolks. Absolutely. That's something I mess up all the time. What did you just dump in there? We're just going to add in the uh, chopped chives the and chives? fresh tarragon. Ah, tarragon. Okay. Isn't tarragon another thing that tastes like um, black licorice? It is, it is. You're really big on this black licorice, licorice taste, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Do so you ever sneak in? Fold it all together, get it well combined, and it's going to come, it's going to tighten up. 
Do you ever sneak in, you know, a big bag of licorice to the movie theater? I do, actually, yeah. Twizzlers, I yeah. do, yeah. See? See, we have something yeah. in common, yeah. Which theater do you go to? The uh, Carmike, just for matinees, though. Uh, just, so, if you're there at the Carmike uh, in Wilmington, North Carolina, during the matinee, keep your eye out for this guy. Right here, in his pocket, will be a big thing of Twizzlers. I'm not just happy and to see you. <laughs> you can... You can you can bust them. You can bring them down. It'll be like cops. All right. So, did we put salt in here already, or do we, we need we more did. salt? Okay. So these are pastry. It's just a puff pastry. That you can find in any frozen food section. Oh, it's in the frozen foods. Yeah. Okay. And so I get clearly we need to let it defrost. Is yeah. That right? We've let these out at room temperature so they're soft and okay. uh, able to be folded. I'm imagining the filling just goes in. Yeah. We're just gonna make a nice line of it and off the end so we can seal the ends also. Um, you said nice line. I didn't quite manage a nice line, but I did manage something. It was a lump. It was okay. a good lump. Good lump of sausage. One, yeah, this, that's okay. perfect right there. I want you know, is, is this like a burrito? I when I try to make a burrito, I completely overdo it. When I get to the edge, I can't roll right, it over. Just busting so. out the seams. Exactly. So you want to be go easy on the filling. Right. All right. Because you can always add more. It's harder to take away. All righty. So this is uh, the one I'm going to attempt here. Okay. Should we have floured the board by any chance? No, these shouldn't sure? stick okay. too much. All right. Um, you do have to work fast when you have puff pastry because it just, it's going to keep getting more and more soft. What are so we keep it off the ends. Okay. Spread it out evenly. Uh-huh. And if you've ever rolled sushi, you just take it. I have. Yeah. yeah actually, yes. Show. You I just have. take it and fold it over one time. Uh-huh. With nice With even. your thumbs. With your thumbs. Hey, we should get okay. the, where's the bamboo things that right. help us roll? That'd be great. Then you'd have another use for those bamboo things. Absolutely. And then, oh, and we're just rolling it up into a tube? To a nice strudel okay. shape. All right. And, and I'm going to go back and grab the knife, and we're going to oh. cut the ends off mm. so seal it nicely. Yeah, I asked you if I needed a knife. Right. And, and so I'm going to go for my drawer O knives here. I apologize. There we go. Oh, and I'm back. Now, we had a whole issue about the knife during the commercial break, and, uh, and apparently we said no on the knives, and now we need it. Yeah, so absolutely. I'm just trimming off the edge? Yeah, oh, just, you pinched yours. I pinched Am it, I and then we're going to seal it down yet. Okay. Go ahead and show me what you're going to do. Cool. So you pinch them, and then you cut off the pinch part. Okay. So cut off your pinch part, which is the technical term in the kitchen. And these you can just throw at people in the yeah, kitchen? Yeah. Throw at crew members? Yes. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, up there! There you go, Brian. That was two for two. Oh, I got two more. <laughs> Here you go, Mike. Oh. Okay. Um, We're getting ready to put the empanadas in the oven, mm -hmm. and you can use pan spray or butter or whatever you feel to uh, grease the pan so the pastry doesn't stick. Okay. And that's so, enough, or do we need to rub yeah, it all we'll over? Yeah, rub it around some more. Okay. You can, use you can just yeah, use your awesome. hands. You know, that's what's fun. Yeah. I mean, we are cooking for ourselves here, so. You can just use that. Look that at that. That's plenty fun. of butter. Ooh. And then just these goes on yeah. here? Mm, like that. All right. And Wipe we're going to. my hand. And how long do they go in the oven for? They're going to go in the oven for a total of eight minutes uh, at about 425. Okay. Let me get the door for you. And if you'll just stick it in there. Thank you, sir. All right. And now we're mixing up a cream sauce, yes. right? It's a real simple sauce. It's just uh, plain cream cheese, unsalted butter, and cream sour cheese cream. Half? Yeah, we're going to do that nice chunk right there. Chunk of cream cheese, yeah. unsalted butter? Yes. Okay. How about all of it? That's perfect. Right there. All right, right there. And this is just sour cream? Straight sour cream. About half a cup, three yes. quarters of a cup? Okay. And put that in there. So again, cream cheese, melted butter, and sour cream. Oh, yeah, thanks. I, <laughs> nothing I love more on this show than to whisk vigorously. Uh, so, well, I'm going to keep mixing this up, and also we got to keep our eye on our empanadas, empanadas in the oven because uh, halfway through the cycle, did you notice that too? Halfway through the cycle, it, uh, it, we're going to need to flip them over and brown the other side. So we'll do all that. When I come back, I'll be talking to Eris Ragazaeus and find out which beverage he's paired with our empanadas. The Carolina Cooking continues.
The Carolina Cooking Cookbook is in stores now. You can find the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas, all in one book, The Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Find The Carolina Cooking Cookbook in Barnes & Noble, Target, Orders Books, Amazon.com, and our website, carolinacooking.tv. That's right, carolinacooking.tv. All the recipes you've seen on the show, wine pairings, advice from the chefs, and Tom. Get the secret recipes of the best chefs in the Carolinas in The Carolina Cooking Cookbook. Choritos, okay. yes. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm here with our wine expert, Eris Ragazias. Arms still tired from whisking vigorously. What have you paired with our empani empanadas? Empanada. Empanadas. I've got a McManus Petit Syrah. Okay. Now, McManus wines are noted for their uh, great value. Mm -hmm. uh, they grow their grapes in the hotter climates of California, and that, that gives the, the wines a super ripe is this like the uh, Shiraz or the Shiraz? I know that no, one of them spells it sounds like a Y. Like it. This, is, this is not spelled the same. No. It's S-I-R-A-H. And the other one is S-Y-R-A-H, yeah. right? This what, is not the, the same grape. Really? It's, Couldn't this, they have gotten actually, them a little further apart then in the uh, naming of them? No, actually uh, the, uh, the DNA evidence says that there is a little Syrah heritage in Petit oh. Syrah, but there are other grapes also. Oh, okay. Yeah, they got like the CSI of the wine world. Yeah, you know, I was the, thinking the Mor Maury Povich of the wine world, but uh, you know, I guess that shows the difference in, in what, <laughs> what we watch on TV here. <laughs> okay, so good this is a... dark a, color. Yep, now, absolutely. when the grapes get this ripe, they got that, that, that jammy, ripe fruit taste. But they also have mm. very, very moderate tannins. Mm -hmm. So it's not, gonna, it's not gonna sting the back of my mouth here. No, it's gonna have that ripe, jammy fruit, a little bit of sweet oak in there too, a little bit of sweet vanilla. Um, mm, uh, vanilla. Accenting the, okay, yeah. You, you get that, in, especially in the, the aftertaste, there's a, there's a sweet taste, not a sugary okay, sweet. Yeah. In the, you know? in the, in the, but in it's the like a finish. vanilla sweetness, yeah. In the finish, and, and, yeah, and, and like that super thing. ripe, sun ripened fruit taste, almost okay. like jam. You know, oh. it's it's really an exceptionally fruity wine. And the uh, and the fruit comes from all the sun and all the heat that they have. Yeah, this is going to San Joaquin Valley, where okay. it's where it's where it's, uh, where it's quite hot. Okay. The grapes build up a lot of sugar and a lot of flavor. Well, if you'll excuse me, Eris, I, uh, I appreciate that I get back to drink wine with you, but I gotta head back to the kitchen and finish up my empan empanadas. Empanadas. <laughs> when Carolina cooking continues. Yeah. One day I'll learn how to say that. Go to carolinacooking.tv for the recipes featured on this show. Plus, on carolinacooking.tv, you'll find more information on the wine, chefs, and foods of Carolina Cooking. Welcome back to Carolina Cooking. I'm here with Chef Trevor Bridgewater from Chelsea's there in Wilmington, North Carolina. And you can see our empanadas are golden brown and we're letting them cool here. We did flip them in the oven, so now we're letting them cool. And in the meantime, we're gonna make up our red sauce. Is that right? Yes. So what goes into our red sauce? I'm uh, imagining red peppers. Yes, for the okay. vinaigrette, we're gonna start with the roasted red peppers. All right, I'm just gonna turn it on and feed them to the blade of death. Ah! Okay, do we need one more? One more. Yeah. Is this a good one? Yes. yes, perfect. And these are just red pepper, like bell peppers, right? Red bell peppers, right. fire roasted. No, 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 please, huh? Ah! Okay. We're just yeah, gonna add the spices. Crushed red don't make the same noise when you feed them to the Play-Doh death. Ah! So that's crushed red pepper? Yes. And? Dried thyme. Dried thyme, okay. Yeah. A little more? A little bit more. All right. There we go. Right there. Okay. And? With, uh, cloves of garlic. Two? Yes. Two cloves of garlic. Oh, there we go. And the champagne vinegar. Oh, champagne vinegar. Could I just use wine vinegar you if can I can use any type of vinegar? Tell me when. All of it. Oh, okay. Wine vinegar? A little salt? Pinch of salt. Pinch of salt. Another pinch of salt? That's perfect. Alright. Any pepper? Uh, we'll add the pepper after it's done. Oh, good. We're gonna slowly drizzle in the oil. Why do we slowly drizzle so in the oil? So it'll uh, bind together, it'll hold together, it'll okay. emulsify. What if we just threw it all in at once? It wouldn't work out? It doesn't seem to work out that okay. way. So tell me when to stop all drizzling, right. I guess. That should be about plenty of oil right there. Okay. And how long does it have to mix up? It's ready to go. Oh. We're gonna turn it off. Okay. Uh, crack some pepper. Inside here. Taste the seasonings. Cracking the pepper. That's it right there. All right. 
And just stir it up. Okay. Here, I'll take this thing out. You can stir. And this little part yeah. comes out here. All right. Do we need to taste it? And make sure it's we good. Do, absolutely. Hmm. That's an interesting flavor. Okay. So what goes down first? A little white. We're gonna start with the cream sauce. Okay. So a little white? Yeah, it's up to you know your creativeness. Just uh, spread it out so we can set the empanadas on there. Okay, I'm gonna go with uh, something like, mm, my creativeness isn't working out here. Hang on. Mm, mm. Going like that. That's a little swish, 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 like the waves crashing on the shore. That was a great and then we effort. have to cut our empanada. Yeah. All right. Ooh, it's a little fragile. Fragile, as they say in Spain. Um, Cut them like this? You cut the ends first to make it so it can stand up nicely, okay. and then cut it on the bias, cut it at an angle. Uh, and you can get about four slices out of it. Okay. There you go. Okay, stacking, stacking. Uh, one there, and one guy like that, and then one and one, and then some red sauce, and you, you do. I'm kind of doing a Pollock thing here, yeah. is what I'm going for. And then some chives, and there you go. And if you want to find out more about our recipe, or our wine, or our beverage, or our chef, or the uh, restaurant Chelsea's, visit our website at carolinacooking.tv. I'm Tom Zelenka here with Chef Trevor Bridgewater, and that's Carolina Cooking. Feel free to grab one and dig in. Mm -mm -mm. These are really good. Go to carolinacooking.tv for the recipes featured on this show. Plus, on carolinacooking.tv, you'll find more information on the wine, chefs, and foods of Carolina Cooking. That's carolinacooking.tv. Carolina Cooking is filmed on location at the Hadco Viking Showroom at 101 West Worthington Avenue in Charlotte, North Carolina. To find more information or a Viking Showroom near you, call 1-800-241-9152 or visit hadco.net.